Hi everybody, my name is Corey Jeffers from the Oshkosh Area School District. Today I want to show you a nice relationship between a couple of different scripts and uh, Google Classroom so that what you can do is use rubrics to assess student work and students can use Google Forms in a similar fashion to do their own self and peer assessment. And then finally, we'll use uh, one script to collect all of those student scores um, in a way that you can analyze them by standard. So uh, most of what we'll be talking today comes from the New Visions Cloud Lab from New Visions for Public Schools. And a lot of the scripts we'll be using have been written by Andrew Stillman. So the one you're looking at at this point is, uh, is Doc Appender. And Doc Appender will use to uh, append the bottom of student documents. Um, when they want to assess themselves. So they'll fill out a Google form and then the, their information will go to the bottom. So Doc Appender is a great, uh, a great script that we'll, we'll use today, uh, or a great add-on. Another add-on that we're going to be using is Doctopus, which again you can get from the New Visions Cloud Lab um, website. And so Doctopus will organize all of the documents that we will generate using Google Classroom and will allow us to add a very important little tool called Gubric, which will uh, allow us to use a rubric to grade, uh, grade students' work. And Andrew Stillman's been hard at work revising the way Gubric looks so that it's a little bit more constant and uh, a bit more flexible for teachers. So the whole process basically starts um, by creating an assignment inside of Google Classroom. So I'm using a teacher's account. Thank you, Angie Casey from Oshkosh, for letting me use your account. Um, and Angie had a, a theme essay that was part of the Lucy Calkins uh, curriculum. So when she put this theme essay into uh, her Google Classroom, students then clicked on the, uh, the assignment. And those particular students then all had a copy made for them by clicking on that assignment in Google Classroom. What happens then is that Angie can go over to her um, to a spreadsheet in Google Drive, and she can run the first script or the first add-on called Doctopus. And when she runs Doctopus, what happens is that she makes a roster of all the students that are that are uh, performing or that made a copy of that particular uh, essay. Okay, and so I'm hiding their, their names a little bit here because I don't want their, their data showing. So it normally wouldn't say student one, student two, and student three. I've changed all those names over here so that uh, it doesn't correspond with an actual student name just for privacy reasons. So this spreadsheet looks like a lot of work, but in fact, um, Doctopus is what actually did all the work. So when you build the roster, it asks you what, uh, what assignment you want to build it from, what class period, and so on and so forth. And it actually, this entire spreadsheet is completely filled out for you. And it has the links and so on and so forth to the student work. Then what Doctopus also allows you to do is it, it allows you to add a rubric to all of the documents that appear in column H right here. So these are all links to Google Documents, student work, basically. And uh, the, we want to make sure that we have a rubric, for example, that's attached to that so that when we visit that document as a teacher, we can use a rubric to, to grade that work. So let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to click on student six to show you what I'm talking about. Um, about. But before I do that, if you look over here, it says sixth grade argumentative Calkins Gubric. This is the document that we would use for it. So if I click on that document, it pops up. And this is basically the rubric here. So the standards are, uh, Common Core standards are appearing on the left hand side here. And then this is the scoring out of it one, two, three, and four. And then we just put basic, minimal, advanced. Um, and proficient in, uh, in this area here. So it's a pretty simple spreadsheet, but it has to be in a spreadsheet so that the, the Google add-on um, Doctopus can actually read it or Gubrick can actually read it. Okay, so basically all you do is uh, you'd add the rubric and, and then you would uh, select this particular file and that would attach that document to uh, each of the students work. So if I go into student six right here and click on it, what happens is it opens up student six's work and this is his particular um, theme-based literacy essay and you can see some of Angie's comments in there because this has already been graded but as you see up here the uh, the little Gubrick I appears and this Gubrick I only appears on Google Documents and other things that Gubrick can uh, can grade and once you've attached a document uh, or a rubric to it then the scores will will pop up here and you have a couple ways to grade it you can click through and grade this way 
Um, and as you can see, when I select it, it changes the score over here. Um, and then you can submit and paste this rubric right down to the bottom of the document. It will actually t paste a picture with all of this, uh, the information shaded and the scores uh, in there. Otherwise, there's this new feature that's the, the test driving of the Gubrick web app, which I think is a really cool feature. So when you click on this particular feature, what happens is it opens up in, in a web a uh, web-based application uh, running through Google Scripts and what you have is uh, is this information here so you basically have the document down below and uh, you can continue to edit this document as you uh, as you need to as a teacher and you can read through the whole thing and then at the top here there's different tabs and these tabs will have each of your standards and then these scores. So you can, uh, you can click between the scores and it will actually change the score that's on there. It turns yellow when you've made a change to let you know that you need to save it. Um, so you can kind of click between them and then either type the scores, write the scores. You can do uh, uh, 3.5s and things like that if you need to. And it will actually select both of them as you see right here, 3 and 4 are both highlighted for that. Okay, so you can uh, you can end up doing both of those, which is which is pretty nice. If you want to see the student's entire scores, you can go up to where it says expand a full rubric. When you expand a full rubric, it doesn't seem like much has been expanded yet, but you can actually resize this area right here. It's a bit more flexible than it used to be, so you can resize this whole area. And now you can look at the entire rubric just to make sure you see how the student did. You can actually select different scores through here too if you want to. As you see, as I'm hovering over them, they all change color. Um, so once you're done with that, you can slide it back up there if you want and change it back to the tabulated view, which is pretty nice. And then you have the option over here to write the student a message, and you can type out that entire message here and, uh, and push submit. And what happens when you push submit is that at the bottom of the, the very bottom of the document, this, the rubric that you have created or the rubric that you have used to, to grade this will actually appear here and it will also appear with a, a timestamp on it. So you can see um, this is basically just a copy of the work that's been done up in this, uh, this upper row panel up here. Okay? And then the, uh, uh, the comments will be below the pasted rubric, which is pretty nice. Now if you want to go to the next student, then all you have to do is push this next button right here and then it will refresh this entire page right here. Another rubric will appear at the top um, and then it will be a different student's work, but it will appear in this exact same window you, or this exact same tab. It will not open a new tab, which is nice. Um, at the same time then, this student scores are being emailed to that student with a copy of this rubric. So they not only get a copy at the bottom of their document, but they also get a copy emailed to them uh, showing the score for each one of the uh, of the standards and then those scores as soon as the teacher pushes this blue submit button uh, basically does three things emails the student pastes it down here and then it also puts it on the spreadsheet that uh, started at the beginning so if you keep on scrolling over on your original Doctopus spreadsheet you'll see I'm grading student 6 right here and grade uh, student 6 right here has these scores so on the overall standard uh, it's 4, 4 in lead and so on and so forth transitions ending you can see that the standards appear in these columns and this is this particular student scores okay um, as you go over to the side here, you can see the number of times that this has been scored. Uh, since we've used this student a number of times, you can see the, uh, um, the count is up a little bit higher. Um, what we've decided to do at the end, we don't see this in the, uh, in the actual uh, Gubrick version uh, or the D actual Doctopus version, but we can actually put a couple of um, formulas in here. So for example, in this particular document, um, we need to make sure that these are added up to a particular totals as we put them into Infinite Campus, um, but some of these are weighted by more than one. So we've just basically added them up and we have a formula in here that uh, multiplies certain standards by two to give them a little bit more weight because they're doubled in weight. Now Lucy Calkins also has an overall score, um, but she uses ranges for those. So in case you want to know the entire Calkins score, we also have a a uh, quick formula that we just threw in there. Now, again, this is not part of the new visions for public school script, but it's something that uh, will work along with the script. And you can you can see that these are where the, the Calkins overall proficiency scores are uh, in there, just in case you need to use them. So it's a very, very powerful tool, and it allows you then a la uh, later on to be able to sort through your information 
um, in a way that's a little bit more efficient for students too for their own goals. So for example, if we wanted to see which of the students uh, received a one in a particular standard, we can see that for, uh, for endings in here, student number 12 received the number one, and uh, that means that that student might be able to uh, start working specifically on W61E, that particular standard, um, for the next, uh, next assignment. So um, it can be a, a very valuable way um, to go about uh, looking at data and so on and so forth. It's kind of cool. So you can unfilter it and get all your scores back and it's a, a, a more of a dynamic rating tool or, uh, to use. Okay? So that's the teacher assessment part. Now if you, uh, if you add a third script into this that's called Doc Appender, we would want to find a way that students can, uh, can assess themselves. And so what we've done is we've taken that exact same rubric from the beginning, so this rubric right here, the Calkins rubric, and we've placed that rubric into what's uh, to a Google form. And in that Google form we've run a script that's called Doc Appender. And since this whole thing started with Google Classroom, Google Classroom automatically organizes everything into folders for you by assignment. So this assignment was entitled the theme-based literacy essay. And so we have student one, student two, and student six here that I'm going to use as examples. So for this uh, particular assignment, if I am student number six and I want to assess myself um, based on the uh, um, the essay that I wrote, I would go over to this document and say, all right, I'm going to choose uh, my own document, so student number six. And in the second question, we would say that this is a self-assessment, so uh, it's going to say self-assessment there. And then I would choose what, I, what my own proficiencies are for this. So if I thought that I, I did pretty well on the first standard, I would choose you know, however uh, well I think I did. So a lot of students in Chromebooks choose to put this, uh, they choose to use a split screen. Um, with the, uh, the alt and bracket buttons will help you uh, divide the screen into two different screens. So uh, you can see the, the form on one side and the Google document on the other. But it basically as they go through and they select these and push submit, what happens is that this particular document, theme-based literacy essay student six, that document is actually appended um, inside of the Google Classroom folder. And I'll show you a little bit more about what I mean. So I'm going to go ahead and go into Mrs. Casey's uh, theme essay uh, folder inside of her Google Classroom Google Drive folder. So let's go ahead and head, head over to her Google Drive Google Classroom folder. And inside of her uh, classroom folder, she has literacy period six, which is the, the period that we're using for this. And they have an, an essay, theme essay, like I was saying before. And you'll see all the students' names that are in here. So I was just working with student six. And as we click on student six, student six had an opportunity, and this is the one we looked at just before. So student six had an opportunity to assess his own work. And as we scroll down, we can see that after filling out the Google form, below his work and below the directions, you'll see uh, the answers to his Google form questions. So this is the, the document that's being appended. It's a self-assessment. And here's how he rated himself. Proficient in this first one, proficient in the second one, advanced in the third one. And he's having an opportunity to assess himself. And this information is now placed directly below his document. So the end result in this entire thing is that um, your all these documents are organized for you in Google Classroom and they're shared with the students and renamed appropriately. Then at the bottom of every document you have the students ability to either do a self-assessment or a peer assessment depending on what they choose in this part. So if it's a peer assessment they would uncheck self and then they would type in um, their own names here and that would appear on the bottom of this document. Okay, So they can do a self-assessment or a peer assessment or both and you'll see that assessment underneath their, uh, their writing and then underneath the self or peer assessment will come up with the teacher assessment which is a slightly different format um, but you see all of that information below. And so it can be a very telling story of the, the student's writing process. And really all the teacher's doing on the, um, on the front end is setting up Google Classroom and switching around their rubrics a little bit. And uh, the benefit is, is that for a lot of these common assessments, 
this particular Google Form, for example, up here would really only have to be made once. And anybody that uses the same Lucy Calkins rubric can then just make a copy of this particular Google Form and all of the questions and so on and so forth are already made. The same goes with this particular rubric. So the Gubric part of it, as long as you follow that Calkins uh, format, and, the, and what the, the Calkins rubric says, you can, the entire district of sixth grade English teachers can use this particular rubric for that summative assessment. So it's a pretty, uh, pretty easy one to put together collaboratively and you get an enormous return because all the students' work is organized, the self, peer, and teacher assessments are on the exact same document, and you also have a, um, a record of how they did on every single one of these um, standards for each one. So you can look at the, the totals of those standards, you can look at the averages, um, who had lower scores, and so on and so forth. And, uh, and you can really start to hone in on which of the standards students need to work on and which ones they are closer to mastering. So if you would like help with this or uh, like help setting it up, um, certainly contact one of your tech coaches in the Oshkosh Area School District, or you can send me an email, uh, corey.jeffers at oshkosh.k12.wi.us, or you can look me up on Google+, and I'll do my best to help you get this set up in your own school. All right, thanks for listening.